be entitled to time in consequence of exercising the right to suspend, which would include extra time to remobilize staff and time to return plant and equipment to site. This concludes the uh, seminar in relation to the substantive bit that I wanted to get through. In front of you now you'll see slide 33 in relation to what Noah's can do for your business to protect you going forward. I'm sure you're all aware that we can do internal training on contractual awareness or forms of contracts. We can tailor make workshops to make sure that your staff, both finance and your commercial staff, are prepared for the act. They know how to draft payment notices and payer notices, and they know what to do if these aren't issued in time. We can undertake contract reviews. We can redraft your standard terms and conditions so that they're act compliant. Obviously, one of our core services relates to adjudication services, acting for one of the parties. We can also undertake final account reviews, and we also have a retention recovery service. That concludes the bits that I wanted to cover. Uh, Robert, over to you. Um, has any of the delegates actually asked any questions? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that presentation, Geraldine. Yeah, I have three questions for you. Um, the first question okay. is, how will the Act affect retention? Okay, that's an excellent question because really this particular piece of legislation, the Construction Act 2009, really has tried to get its talons into this sticky issue of retention. What the Act has done by basically banning pay when certified is it's basically put a situation in there where main contractors can no longer rely on what has the employer done? Has the employer actually issued a making good defect certificate? And rely on the situation where the subcontractor is sat there waiting for its retention when actually there's no problems with its work at all. So the Act bans this situation of pay when certified and any attempt by the main contractor to actually tie payments which are due into any other certificates. The good news is that if main contractors don't amend their current contracts, then actually a subcontractor who properly serves the required notices, including a full application for payment once completed, could actually be paid under the scheme a mere 47 days after finishing on site. However, I do think main contractors will try and get around this problem by simply making the release of retention let's say 12 months after the subcontractor is completed on site. Or indeed, they could take the likely completion date and then say the, um, the amount that the subcontractor will receive in relation to retention will be paid on the completion date plus 12 months. So it's good news, but I think main contractors may well try successfully to get around this issue. Do we have any more questions, Robert? Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the second question, uh, is the Construction Act valid in Northern Ireland? Good question. In relation to the original piece of legislation, the Construction Act 1996, yes it is. And yes, there was a scheme for construction on contracts that related specifically to Northern Ireland. However, in relation to the Construction Act 2009, then no, there isn't any new piece of legislation or any new scheme for Northern Ireland. Some would say the lucky people in Northern Ireland are actually still on the old rules, which are certainly simpler. Right, thank you very much. And the last question we've had from uh, several of our members, uh, will there be any template documents available? Yes, there will. Uh, what we are intending to do for AIF members is to actually put a template a payer notice or payment notice actually on the members only area on the AIS website. I would give you a note of caution though that you will need to actually tailor this draft payer notice or payment notice to actually suit the contracts that you're using. It certainly isn't a one size fits all scenario. You will actually have to make sure that you look at the template and then tailor it to suit your particular circumstances.
Well, thank you very much for an interesting and informative uh, webinar, Geraldine. Um, just before closing, I would like to uh, tell all attendees that the uh, webinar presentation that um, you have um, uh, presented today will be posted on the AIS website under www.ais-interiors.org.uk and a recording will also be available shortly. We will email all attendees with details. Thank you for attending and thank you once more to Geraldine. I'm now going to close the webinar. Robert, thank you very much and thanks for the delegates.